Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial for Motion Symphony. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can use cut clips with Motion Symphony. So this is particularly pertaining to motion matching. Now, one thing we need to keep in mind is that motion matching isn't something that works generally well with cut clips. I've done what I can to support cut clips with uh, Motion Symphony's motion matching. However, you're never going to get as good results as you are going to with mocap. There just isn't enough data, there isn't enough coverage, and there isn't continuity. So in this tutorial, I'm not going to go over the full setup again, but I am going to go over what the differences are and what things you need to keep in mind when setting up cut clips. The cut clips that I happen to be using here are Kubold's cut clips from the Marketplace, uh, the Movement Atom Set Pro. Uh, I'm not necessarily endorsing these, but um, you know, as like the best or anything for cut clips, but I'm j that's just what I'm using to demonstrate this. Uh, so first thing with cut clips is the animations. You can't just use any animation you want. Uh, you need an the animations to line up properly. You need the animations to have transitions. Like for example, you can see there's 180 plants. I've got starts in all directions. You can't just go from an idle to running. It doesn't work with motion matching. That's not a motion symphony thing. That's just motion matching in general. It's about matching motion. And if there's a big gap between animations, it's not going to match. So keep that in mind uh, when looking at animation packs that you want to use with motion symphony. Personally, I think you should be using more the other types of nodes uh, that motion symphony provides. If you're going to be heavy on cut clips, there's distance matching nodes, pose matching nodes, and all of these can be very useful. Um, but Anyway, with that being said, let's have a look at how we can do uh, cut clips with motion matching in Motion Symphony. So, first things first, we have to have a look at our animations. Now, we're not going to have nearly as much coverage, and so we're going to have to compensate for that. And one way to do that is with blend spaces and also uh, with composites. So, composites are a type of animation asset that is a native to UE4, so you can create a composite by going to animation and create an animation composite. So I'm not going to create them all now because I've done it already, but for example, I have done it for all my starts. Now you're not going to do it for every single animation. I only do it for my start animation, so you can see here I've got a run forward start 135 degrees left. So you know, and then I've tacked on two run forward loops. Now, why have I did, done this? Well, typically with starts and with plants, um, I find that when the animation gets to the end, there's a bit of a problem because the pose wants to change, but then this last pose also matches really well. So it flips between two different animations and it gets all jittery. So the way to overcome this with Motion Symphony is to use composites instead and tack on this um, a loop on the end of these animations. Alternatively, you could modify the animations yourself in your own animation package to make it a bit longer. So once you get to the end, you know, um, you know, play a bit further. This helps with the continuity problem. And if you understand, if you've read the motion matching, uh, you know, animation sourcing slash um, authoring guide, it talks about continuity, and this fixes that continuity somewhat. So I've gone and done this with a bunch of animations. Um, so we've got all my starts in all different directions and I've done it with my plants. I have not done it with my stops. And the reason is because it's not necessary because a stop ends with an idle pose and that's all right. So we just use the normal stops as sequences and all the starts and plants we change into composites. All of them are the same. They've all just got one or two loops tacked on to the end of them. Okay, so let's look at one more thing and that is blend spaces. So blend spaces are necessary to get cut clips working as well. And I'm only gonna use one in this case. Now I'm not doing a strafing set. A strafe set, you would probably use four different ones. And there is some information in the documentation on how to, um, how to do this. Uh, but either way, uh, the only thing I'm going to use it is for arcing runs. Now one of the limitations of motion matching is that it can only play animations that are provided to it. So it can't maintain blends, right? It can blend from one animation to the other very quickly, but it can't typically create a blend. And to overcome this, I've added support for blend spaces. Now, um, don't let that confuse you. It's not the same as playing a normal blend space. Basically what it does is it takes samples along the blend space and makes poses for the animations at those different samples. So this might be divided into like 10 different samples 
and then you can get all these different uh, animations in between. So when a pose is chosen, it's going to pick one of the samples and then stick to that until another pose search tells it to go to somewhere else in the blend space or change animation altogether. So in this case, you can see I'm able to get, you know, different angles of the arcs, and that's what I'm going to use it for here. So yeah, if you were to not use a blend space and you just threw in your straight run animation and your arc left and arc right, what's going to happen is when you when you go to turn, um, it's either not going to turn, but then when it does, it's going to snap to full tilt, and we don't really want that. We want a smoother transition of some sort. So let's take a look at the motion data. Pretty much everything else is the same. So the, the motion config is nothing special. I've kept it pretty much identical to um, the other ones. There's no difference to consider there. Uh, the calibration uh, is a little bit different depending on the animations. It's always depending on the animations, but I'll show you that a bit later. Let's open up the motion data and have a look. So you can see here, I've got my two sequences and these are just my stops. And you can see I've just tagged the beginning with a little bit of do not use. Um, it's basically because I didn't want it to accidentally pick these starting animations. Uh, you could probably get, get away without doing it, but there's not really much to do here except uh, for, for this here. So if you click on these animations, you can see some additional settings. And one of the problems with not having continuity with cut clips is that how do we generate a trajectory in the past or the future that is beyond the limit of the clips? Now there's multiple ways to do that, and we can specify it in this section. Uh, so we've got the past trajectory, so this is the trajectory in the past behind the character. So at the beginning of the animation, how do we determine what the trajectory is behind the character? So if I click on show pose data, you can see that while well, my green trajectory line starts about there, but how have I figured out that the, this past trajectory here? And in this case, I'm telling it, well, take it from another animation. So if you set this to animation, and then you choose the animation to take it from, it's a run forward loop, then it can figure out that animation. In the case of a stop, you don't really need to worry about the future because it's idle anyway. It'll just get cut short, as you can see here. Um, whether you put in an idle there or not, the result's gonna be the same for the trajectory that's generated, so it's okay. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you don't have an animation, you can choose to extrapolate. Um, and I'll do that. I'll show you that just quickly. And you can see it's pretty close to the same thing. But uh, yeah, that's an option. Uh, it's slightly different there because it basically just extrapolates the motion at the beginning of the animation. So there you go, that's our stops. And now we can see under the composites title, we have all our starts. And there's nothing much here. You can ignore this distance matching tag. That was just me playing around with something. Um, and basically run forward start, you can see these composites I've got. So this is like a, a plant, 180 plant, and then the two running animations that are tacked on to the end in the composite. You can see we get a lot more continuity. The only thing we do need to do is just do not use tag the end. Probably doesn't even need to be that much, just needs to be a little bit at the end so that this animation will switch out before it gets to the end. The problem is if it gets to the end and then it switches out, the animation has nowhere to go and it'll be like a freeze frame for a second. So that's another continuity problem. So at the end of your sort of start run animations, a bit of do not use. Problem is if we don't use composites and we just stop the, we have to do that do not use about maybe here, then we're going to have another continuity problem because in this gap here to jump from, you know, this pose here to like a running animation, we're going to cut our start or our plant short and there's going to be a gap to jump and it's not going to like that very much. Motion matching doesn't like jumping big gaps. It likes close gaps where the pose is similar and the trajectory is similar. So for all of these, I've pretty much just gone and um, add do not use tags to the end. I probably could make them a lot smaller to be honest. They only need to be about, you know, whatever your blend time is. There needs to be like one, at least one blend time from the end. And yeah, they're pretty much all the same. You can see some that I've actually had past trajectory. Let's see, what is this for? Yeah, so past trajectory here, I've said from animation from a straight run route because it's a plant. So for all the plants, I've got a past trajectory set, but run all the starts, I've just left them as none. And in this case, you can see I've even added extrapolate on the end to extrapolate the trajectory. I could just take it from another run doesn't really matter. But I think you get the idea here. There's nothing much to it. 
It's just making sure that your trajectory makes sense. Like if, for example, I'm going to turn this to none and I'll show you what the trajectory looks like at the end. If you're getting something like this, so it doesn't make sense. He's in a full running pose and the future trajectory is just zero there. Then there's something wrong. So you have to tell it, okay, well, let's extrapolate that. Um, and even though this is in do not use, it doesn't really matter. You still want to have a good trajectory data. So all of these are pretty much the same, except I've got a run forward loop. Now, I could have just done this with a sequence, but I just tacked together three run forward loops. And the only reason I do this is as a reminder, if you want to get a really good running loop, you should probably have multiple cycles of that loop to get it more more variation. One loop cycle of a run is not very good looking. Um, and yes, while it's just tacked together three of the same thing, so it's not going to help with cut clips, it's just a concept that I keep in mind. Um, Basically, I would replace it with that. But anyway, this one, the only thing I've done is click the loop here. And I don't even need this extrapolate because when when it's set to loop, right, it's going to know, it's going to basically loop the animation to figure out the trajectory. So if I pre-process, you can see that it still figures out the trajectory fine because I've checked looping. Um, you'll notice that I've got optimization turned off. So the pre-processing is like, is instant. Uh, so that's good. Um, and then finally we have our, so what's this one? Yeah, so that's another plant. Cool. Finally, we have our blend spaces. And, um, so what have I done to set up this blend space? I've set this to loop. So only really use blend spaces for looping stuff in motion symphony, uh, for starters. So check that loop. And the only other option that we have is the sample spacing. So if we think of a blend space of, you know, size zero for zero being the left or the bottom and one being the far right or the top, depending on which axis you're looking at. Um, this is how many, this is the interval of samples along that, that line. So if I've say 0 0.1, that means, you know, there's going to be 10 samples. So, you know, every, well, actually there'll be 11 because there'll be a sample at zero. So going from the left of the blend space all the way to the right, I'll open up my blend space here. So if we divide our blend space into 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, it doesn't matter that I've got 100 and negative 100 here. It's just 0 to 1 is the size. It's a normalized blend space spacing, if that makes sense. So that's defining all the samples. In the case of the Y, I've set it to 0 0.5. So there's pretty much, there's going to be one sample on, I could actually set that just to 1 even. And there'll just be one sample on the Y. Um, probably uh, I will add just normal uh, 1D blend space support, but for now it's just 2D blend spaces, so keep that in mind. If you don't want to use an axis, just set to 1 and you won't get any samples there. Um, so for now you can only just preview the 1, uh, it's just going to show whatever is the first sample, but you should get an idea that it is working for you there. Um, that might change in the future where you can change what, what sort of sample you're looking at when previewing a blend space, but for now it is what it is. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, it's all about getting, uh, you know, having enough transitions. So having all these nice transition animations, uh, setting up the blend space, uh, making sure you do this do not use tagging at the end of your starts and plants, and also setting up the composites. Um, oh, and also making sure your trajectory calculation is fine. I mean, with mocap, you pretty much chuck it in and you, you'll do use do not use tags to, to um, filter out animations you don't want but otherwise it's just you don't need all this other stuff um but for cut clips you do need to be aware of this and and set the settings appropriately so if we save and i go into play we have our character running around with cut clips and you can see that the um as the blend space is working and the running animation and we got our plants we got our stops our starts in sort of all directions there we go now you will find that cut clips won't have nearly as much coverage as mocap but that's just something that you're going to have to live with there's nothing that you can actually do with motion matching itself to change that it's the nature of motion matching um but you can make more clips you can, if you're missing a transition, even if you do a dirty blend, like in Blender or something or, or Motion Builder or whatever, just a dirty blend from like idle to whatever that movement is, um, that'll still be better than not having that transition, even though it's a dirty blend. Um, let's have a look at the calibration.
to see what I've done here. So um, I have done, I haven't done a whole lot. It is actually mostly the same. I have turned the momentum weight and the angular momentum down to one. And you can see I've got a bit more on the quality side here. I don't think that's really necessary. I could probably set that to 0.5 and it would be fine. Um, one other thing to note is I'm not using an optimization module. I, I could, but it's not really necessary. You'll see that there's a lot less poses. So if I go adamnode.mosynth and I go to mm search debug. So when I'm running, you can see there's a total of 1,207 poses for this whole locomotion set at, uh, for running. It's not a lot. And so I kind of just went, well, what's the point of having a um, clustering? You can try it, but I would change the settings. Uh, for example, you're going to have a much smaller desired lookup table, like maybe even less than 50. Uh, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go and see what happens. Uh, I'll just click optimize. I've already got it set up in there. Pre-process shouldn't take long because there's not many poses at all. And yeah, it's working. Actually, you know that that's pretty good. That's actually pretty good. It's only searching a hundred now. So even with cut clips, yeah, still still use the optimization. But e either way, you don't you don't have to depending on how many poses you've got. But this is actually a good visualization of how much less coverage there is uh, with cut clips. Um, if you've seen it done with the mocap, the, this, there's just a lot more going on there with that uh, visualization. Anyway, I hope this uh, helps. Unfortunately, I can't share uh, this particular setup, um, but my hope is that you'll understand it and be able to set it up yourself with your own animation sets. Um, I can't share it because I don't own the redistribution rights for it. So thank you all for watching. Um, hopefully this helps you get started with cut clips uh, and you know, if you are using cuff clips, I strongly recommend you take a look at the pose matching nodes and the distance matching nodes. Personally, if I was to use cut clips, I'd probably be using those more, uh, to be honest. So thank you for watching. See you next time.